Hi folks, it is April the 19th, Friday. Um, good Friday. Happy Easter. Um, a couple of things have been happening in the last few weeks. I, I talked about the, the fact that somebody copied my tray. Um, can't say I'm happy about it, but it's expected. But also, something happened last week. Somebody bought uh, both the gadgets, both my first gadgets, the uh, the frame fingers and the and the queen disc. And I don't know if it was the day he got it or the day after he got it or somewhere in that time frame. He took a picture and posted it on his Facebook page. Now, I'm not friends with this individual on Facebook, but it got back to me, the post. And I guess it's also on a, a beekeeping blog, or I'm also not a member there, but um, in any case, or be, some kind of beekeeping Facebook group. But it started some discussion, and it's discussion that I've already had before with people. Uh, there are people out there that think it's a really cool gadget, and there's people out there that think it's a really dumb idea. And I get that, okay? There are, there are some simple facts that you have to embrace when you're manufacturing things. First is, not everybody's going to think your gadget is cool. You know, some people are going to think it's dumb. It's okay. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I like it. It's my gadget. And that's all that matters. So, if you're making something, you know, you get into this invent, inventing or manufacturing idea, as long as you like it, who cares? That's the first thing. Second thing is, someone will copy your gadget. Guaranteed. And it's just a matter of time. And you can approach this with a couple of philosophies. Most, most manufacturers approach it with the philosophy of, I'm going to make as much money as I can, as fast as I can, before someone copies it and sells it cheap, so I can get in it and, and hit, the, hit the market heavy. Or you can take a philosophy, which I've taken, is I'm going to manufacture this thing at a place where I can make a reasonable profit, and yet make it attractive to the tinkerer to not make his own which is where I'm at on my things because I make my stuff at a point where yeah, I accept the fact that there's hundreds of people that can make it themselves but can you make it for the price you pay if you make if you buy it from me and I seriously doubt it unless you've already got the stuff I doubt it so that's my philosophy in any way I accept the fact some people won't like it some people are going to like it so the debate goes on with this and here's my thought on that whole thing also it's it's the topic of this whole video it's the dance we all do the dance. But we all do a different dance. I'm a machinist. I've been doing machine work for just about 30 years. For the last 10 years, I've been programming CNC machines. And I taught myself how to program CNC machines. I'm not going to say I'm great at it, but I am really good. And I've met people who have been doing it longer than I have who are better. And I've met people doing it longer than I have who cannot do some of the stuff I do. There's a guy I work with who says, it's fascinating to stand back and watch me at the keyboard typing in a program because my hand just dances across the buttons. And most of the time when I'm writing a program for something, I'll look at the part, look at the print. I see lines. I see the line where I want the tool to cut. And without even any conscious thought, I can stand in front of the control. I can call up the tool. I can set a speed rate and a feed rate and a, an approach point and a direction. I do the, all of this stuff without really thinking. I mean, obviously my brain's thinking about it, but I don't have a conscious thought. I just do it. Let's say a concert pianist can sit at a piano and just play. If you, if you had Billy Joel at a piano, ask him to play Piano Man and talk to him at the same time, he could carry on a conversation and play the piano without missing a beat because he does that. That's his dance. The machine work is my dance. If you're breeding queens, and you're breeding thousands of queens a year, that's your dance. And you're probably pretty good at your dance. And quite frankly, the gadget I made isn't targeted to you. Because if you're making thousands of queens already, you don't need my help. You don't need the gadget. But if you're a novice beekeeper or a sideliner, or someone who makes queens for one or two months out of the year, or you want to try this, this is a pretty cool tool. I get it. I talked to a guy um, last month, month and a half ago. He says, it's all just numbers. It's, it's 10 and 12. 
Now you're 10 days after you graft or 12 days after you graft and it's pretty easy to figure it out. It's like, yeah, it is. If you've been doing this for a significant amount of time, it is easy to figure out. But, but I'm not, that's not my target. So that's my target. Do I care that someone doesn't like my product? Yeah, I care. It, I want everybody to like my product, but I accept the fact that some people won't. And it's okay. You don't like the product, don't buy it. You like the product, buy it. In fact, if you like the product, tell somebody else to buy it. I want to sell more product. So that's my take on the whole thing. Yeah. Find the tune that you dance to and dance. And if you don't like the way somebody else dances, who cares? Let them dance. That's all for now.